Yo, it's Tog from We Make Best, and in today's video, we're going to be going over three huge reasons that are holding you back on becoming a better flesh and blood player. So let's get into it. So to start it off, reason number one is you switch decks too much. So to explain why switching decks too much is detrimental, I actually have this analogy. So the analogy is in order to learn carpentry, you must first learn the hammer. Now what this is trying to explain is that in order to learn the craft, you must first learn the tool. So say you want to be a carpenter and you know the general theory on how to build a roof. But the thing is, if you don't know how to use a hammer, that information you have there on knowing how to build a roof, it literally means nothing because you can't execute on what you know. So the same thing goes for flesh and blood. A lot of people have these general theories of the game, like let's say things like Oldham destroys Dromai, but if you don't first know how to properly play Oldham in that matchup, the theory is meaningless since you'll still lose to a good Dromai. So that's why you must learn the tool and then the tool will allow us to learn the craft. And to explain the actual benefits of staying on one deck and developing that proper hero mastery, the first thing that will happen is you're gonna develop this muscle memory of the deck. So you won't need to think about your sequencing. You won't have to think about if you should block or not with X card, what to arsenal, when to use your armor, stuff like that. You'll just know thanks to building all that muscle memory on the deck. And what this does is it actually clears mental stack for you, which allows you to instead shift your attention towards what your opponent is doing. And then you'll start noticing things like, oh, they just pitched away their third red pummel. I don't have to play around it. Or, oh, look, they just double blocked with two spinal crushes so I won't have to play around that for the next turn that they take damage and just allows you to play more accordingly with what's going on in the game. And then it even lets you start noticing slight differences in game plans that this player may have as compared to previous players that you've played in the same matchup. And so now not only are you learning how to play your matchup more in depth, but now you're also learning how the opposing hero should and shouldn't be playing in this matchup as well. So in a way you're also learning the opposing hero just because you've stuck to your own hero long enough that you have all this muscle memory built up and can now focus your mental stack onto focusing on what your opponent is playing as well as yourself. And the craziest part about this tip is you won't even realize all of this happening until all of a sudden you do. So that's why we put this at tip number one, super important, stop switching decks so much. Now coming in at number two, our second tip would be game plan beats hand. So this is a simple concept that we came up with and that concept is that every single decision you make in a game should allow with your overall game plan. Now, we've noticed a lot of players don't have any game plan or even thoughts behind their in-game decisions. And the thing with that is, Flesh and Blood is actually one of the most punishing games there is in the way of compounding mistakes. Now, to explain what compounding mistakes are real quickly, there are a series of mistakes that all stem from one mistake made earlier in the game. Everyone has had those games where the entire match is just out of your control and you're just getting beat up every turn until eventually you lose. And these games are actually because of a single mistake made in the early game that has just been compounding over the course of the game every single turn compounding 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 until ultimately you lose so the good thing about compounding mistakes is you can easily trace the matches all the way back to the initial mistake that started it all and then when I first started doing this I was easily finding all the early game mistakes I was doing but the thing was that these mistakes were often the best looking thing to do with your hand at the time so this made it extremely difficult to be able to catch yourself in real time during the match just exactly what was the correct play or not so I actually came up with this equation to help figure out the correct line on any decision point during the game at any time and the equation is quite simple it's just context of the game plus your game plan equals the correct line now it's really simple to use this equation because anytime during a match before you play or block with your freshly drawn hand after you end your turn just ask yourself what's the context of this game and what's my game plan and so when you ask yourself these questions what's going to happen is you're going to subconsciously be telling yourself what your initial game plan is and reminding yourself that you need to stick to that game plan but then you're also asking yourself the context of the game and when you have the context of the game it's telling you whether or not you should deviate off of this game plan and try something else or if you should just stay strong and stay to the game plan and then that's why it helps you to find the correct line with every single hand whether there's a more efficient play with the hand or not and also figuring out the context also becomes a lot easier once you practice the first tip of this video because like I said before you'll start 
to realize what your opponent has pitched, what they could possibly have in hand right now, what they have left in the deck, and so forth and so forth. And that's why having a game plan is so, 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 so important because it gives you the ability to utilize this honestly broken equation for any matchup. So that's tip number two, game plan beats hand. And then lastly for the tips, we have ineffective playtesting. So ineffective playtesting is actually one of the worst things you could be doing if you're seriously trying to improve at flesh and blood. To explain why it's so detrimental, it's because not only does it completely waste your time and effort without producing any relevant improvement, but also it's detrimental because it can reinforce bad in-game decisions, it can help build misconceptions of certain matchups, and simply just build bad habits for you. So in flesh and blood, ineffective playtesting won't make you better at the game, but on top of that, it will also make it harder for you to get better at the game the longer you do it. So to help stay away from this, we just like to think of it like this, it's quality always trumps quantity. And to cover this, I actually have a Patreon post that I did a while back that will actually help a lot with your effective testing. So let's go over it real quick. So in this post, I'm just explaining exactly how to have effective play testing for yourself. So step one in here was game blocks, play and record up to three games in a row. After that, review all three games. And only after I review all three of those games will I allow myself to play another block. And then the second part is play to improve and not to win. When you play to win, losses will affect your mental harshly and this trap is what makes players feel really bad about reviewing their own games because it hurts their ego but then whereas if you play to improve losing won't affect your mental and then this will allow you to review your losses more enthusiastically and then when you do this you realize that your losses actually contain the most amount of potential improvement for your game overall and then lastly you always want to play at max intensity and how i rated this was one max intensity game is worth more than 50 low intensity games to explain why so when you're playing at a low intensity you'll make basic fundamental mistakes and then this will negatively affect our ability to review the game afterwards this is because the main takeaway from that review would be something that we already know whereas if we're playing at a high intensity you're much less likely to make these basic mistakes allowing you to dive deeper into the details of the game and this is where you're going to find those golden nuggets of new information that we can use to improve our game as fast and efficiently as possible so hopefully that'll help you make your play testing sessions a little bit more effective but that was step number three ineffective playtesting. So hopefully this video helped. Tell us in the comments if you want to see more content like this in the future. But for now, we out. Peace.